let me record my, my part over here. So here, let's, let's go back to the D major scale, except this time we're gonna flutter tongue it about the same tempo, but since we're flutter tonguing, we're not gonna articulate. Good. So now, instead of the flutter, I just want you to um, uh, flip that tongue three times to make the triplet. So it should feel like your tongue's doing the exact same thing. Nice, nice and legato. As legato is humanly possible. Now E. good so we're going to stop there because again the b natural the way that it's written um a trigger trombone doesn't actually have that sorry an f attachment trombone doesn't really have that low b natural so instead of just playing it out of tune we're going to skip that one very good job naomi sounds really nice now what we're going to do before we move on to a different scale let's jump to someone else and i want to jump to dave here and we're going to do something different with this scale here there there we go Hey Dave, how are you? So this is what I want to, this this is what I want to do with this scale. So we just played it as triplets, but now instead of playing just three of the same notes in a row, we're actually going to play 
the first note, the second note, and back to the first note. So we're going to go C, D, C, D, E, D, E, F, E, F, G, F, G, uh, A, G, A, B flat, A, B flat, B, B flat, B, C, B, and then C, B, C, B, B flat, B, just like that. Um, if you're not sure what's going on, and by the way, I highly recommend if you're not playing, finger along and pretend like you're playing. It's really good for the visualization. Just pretend like you're doing it perfect. Don't worry about the fingers. Think about the sound in your head and, and the beauty of the tone you're trying to create. So, you ready for that, Dave? Yep. All right. A little bit of a lag. So, here we go. Let's just end that with a with a uh, a long tonic. All right, let's hear it, Dave. Okay. some technical difficulties let me try to to increase its size <laughs> all right there we go so much for my video all right let me just leave the bebop dominant up there and hopefully you can all still see it and i'll put this over here all right let's hear you So hopefully everybody's uh, following along really well. We'll do it nice and slow so everybody has time, time to get it. But this, remember, anybody can sound good on their notes. It, the, the hard part um, that I want you to focus on is to make sure we're sounding good in between the notes. So, do, re, do, re, mi, re, mi, fa, mi, and so on.
like we lost him. All right, so hopefully everybody else finished off the scale at home, and then we'll get Dave back. Ah, oh, there's Dave. All right. I think I went out for the end of that. That's all right. All right, let's go to A. Uh, let me start that over again. Did I get start on the wrong note? Sorry, <laughs> wrong exercise. good dave excellent thank you for that um it's good mental and focus exercise if not a finger <laughs> exercise right there all right so let's see do i have any volunteers let's see amelia are you there are yeah you there, amelia? i am i'm just i i'm splitting my attention between this and calculus so it's a bit uh, oh okay um, so do you want to uh, i think i can Yep. Sure. All right. What, oh. what are we doing right now? Sorry. Like, what do you now, want me to do? Now we're just going to play the scale, but we're going to be playing it fast. So at that same tempo, but just one note okay. at a time. Bum, 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 okay. bum, 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 bum. We'll go back and forth. Nice. Now at a quick okay. tempo of this, since we've been doing all of this practice. Okay. Sorry, which scale is this? C, like, the first one. What's the starting note? I can see. Thank you. Oh, you cannot see it? What? No, I can see it. I just I didn't know where we were. Sorry. All right. It's, it's, it's all right. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot too hard because these are the bebop scales. So if you, you've probably not practiced these in, in, in school. Um, so why don't we come back to you on, on one of the other, uh, probably on the next scale. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah. That, that Let's, yeah. So, so we can, 
We'll, we'll do one of the articulation exercises on one of the other scales. Do I have a uh, volunteer to, that would want to play these scales fast? Uh, I'm, I'm looking on Zoom. There's like the way that you could raise your hand or... Who do I have here with a, a camera on? Dave wants to do it, but you already just went. Uh, Justin, you want to go for it? Excellent. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, okay. So we'll do it nice and fast. Um, we've got a whole bunch of different age groups on, on, on this uh, group. So if you have some trouble playing uh, these, these scales quickly, don't worry about it. Do the best that you can. And that's why we're practicing a lot of the articulation exercises on our scale. So here we go. Good job, Justin. Sounds really good. And I love your legato style. Everybody match that. It sounds really nice. Nice, smooth, connected tone in between during the articulations. Excellent. All right. Well, have you practiced your bebop scales, or is it just like a major scale with the, the added flat seven in there? Yeah, it's just a major scale. With the... Yeah. So it's a, it's a good one. Um, again, the entire point of bebop scales, uh, when you're practicing your scales to do jazz improv, you get your dominant seven in there, and the most important thing is that you have a eight-note scale instead of a seven-note scale, so you can just play a string of um, 16th notes, and you can always start and end on a tonic on beat one. So it's a, it's a really nifty trick for that, and it allows you just to play a whole bunch of notes really fast, and as long as you get your starting note and your end note, it helps you uh, move from one to the other really smoothly. All right, so it's just and it's also, for our purposes, it's just good reading material. So we're going to move on now to a simpler, shorter scale, the blues scale. Now, the blues scale, again, it's, it's, it's very different because there's no second scale degree. It goes, do, me, fa, fi, sol, te, do. So what does that mean? There's no re and there's no uh, la. But we have both a fa and a fi, so we have a fourth note in the scale and then a raised fourth note in the scale. So that's, that's a, a little leading tone into um, the, the dominant or the fifth note in the scale degree. I'm sure like half the, peop like half the people here are like, oh yeah, okay, I get that. And then the other half, I've, I have no idea what these words are that you're saying, and that's perfectly fine either way. It's kind of just good to hear it before you get the explanation uh, for it. So let's see. I'm going to go back to Amelia. Is that all right, Amelia? Sure, I'll, I'll give it a try. And the best part of this scale, and remember, we're starting on that super low C, so if, if, do you have a, an F attachment on your trombone? No. So, now, I'm going to do this on my trombone, and I'm not going to use my F attachment, just to, to, to help you with this. So, okay. um, let's do a little quick mini lesson on your, uh, what, what trombonists and trumpet players call their single pedals. So... That's the, the B flat, let's go. Um, B flat, E flat, B flat, E flat, like this. Go for that, I'm not using the trigger, I'm just lipping down on um, third position. 
to get that bottom E flat. Go for it. That's it. You just kind of have to fake it. You can do it. And you had no idea you can play all of those notes without a trigger, did you? That's so cool. I know, isn't it? And it, yeah. to be honest, it only works on smaller bore instruments, especially non-conical instruments. I practice that all the time on my euphonium because if I can even play it and it sounds terrible on euphonium, it makes everything else sound really good. On a small bore trombone, you can play it with the same, pretty much the same tone quality as any other note that you play, especially if you practice. Um, that's a reason why 100 years ago and 150 years ago, all the brass players played on small bore instruments because you didn't need to have an extra valve to play those low notes. Um, all of the um, Arthur Pryor trombones things, he had a very small bore instrument and he could play all of those notes and it sounded just as good as anything else and it kind of tricked people. So those are called your single pedals. Um, euphonium players, uh, even if you have your trigger, you can, you can play those without, without using the trigger. So now that you can play that E flat, Let's try it playing the C. Uh. So that C is just a regular sixth, sixth position. If you use the trigger, it's really kind of seventh position with the trigger. But if you're doing single pedals, it's just going to be your, your, your same sixth position. All right, okay. give it a try. get that a little bit down a little, a little bit lower so the wonderful first one that's going to be the lowest scale is the first scale so everybody else who's a little bit bored you can practice it at home by the way if you are a little bit bored try doing it only with your first three valves and not, and, and not using your either your fourth valve on euphonium or try not using your trigger and see if you can play it too just so you can see if you if you can or not so this is a large bore trombone and i can still get it out on this one so this is the exercise we're going to go back to playing triplets, and we'll do these nice and long, so. Go for it. good. You didn't wake up this morning thinking you're going to learn seven new notes on your trombone, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Let's keep on rolling with it. All right, everybody else. Thank you for your patience. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool thing to learn. By the way, if you can play these single pedals with a really clear, consistent tone and making it sound like every other note, it's going to open up your, your uh, tone quality and your ability to, to, to play smoothly on every other range on your, on your instrument. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we're going to move on to E, and the big thing I want you to listen for, Amelia, is I want you to, to see if you can have your teeth be the exact same position for all of the notes, especially while you're tonguing. Na, 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 na. I'm going to sing it on a na and think about a na just because it's different. You probably never tried articulating on a na. It's the exact same thing that your tongue is doing, so don't, don't change that. But think of it differently. If you give your brain something else to think about, it might be able to to do it a little bit differently to keep you from moving your chin. So, on a na na na. This should be A. Here we go. A. all you know like we, we can play this one on 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 a, on a single slide yeah i need to work on my slide work don't make fun of me, Dave. All right, go for it. So, you can see that this is a real good one to keep working on. All of a sudden, it seems easier to um, play the scales normally than it is to just re-articulate on them, especially when we get down to the low range. That's what makes this so good, because you have enough time to think about the scale, but you just focus on making a clear and consistent tone. So, don't worry about playing the right notes. I'm concerned with... That tone quality, that, that, that flowing, flowingness of the exercise. You can miss notes, it's fine. All right. Um, John, how are you doing? Give me a thumbs up if your nose is okay. Were you doing good on this scale? Yeah, good thumbs up. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the other, the other process. We're going to do it the exact same way. Three notes, except we're going to um, do stairs up the scale. So 
C A f oh sorry C E flat C E flat F E flat F F sharp F F sharp G F sharp G B flat G B flat C B flat C B flat C just like that. You good with that? Yep. And we'll do it nice and slow. I'll switch back to the tuba right now. Probably it's not really good to be mixing around. It's I don't know how many of you double. It's you have to practice switching around or else it really kind of messes up your face. But the secret is you don't think about it and you just blow in the mouthpiece and then you just like let it take care of itself. You do it enough times, so you gotta you gotta practice doing that, and all of a sudden it gets a lot easier, so then you stop thinking. So here we go. Nice. All right. I'm going to slow it down for you, and you're going to promise me you're going to breathe twice as often if I slow it down. Got it? All right. All right. Just because, yeah, there's no way that's going to work that way. So we'll slow it down and keep it nice, smooth, and steady, because I'm really, I want to visualize like you're pouring, I keep on going back, hot fudge on an ice cream sundae. That's, that, that's kind of the, the tone I'm going for this one. I'm going to take it even slower because I'm listening to my own playing. I've got a little bit of a burr in there every now and then. And you know what the best way is to get rid of a double buzz or a, or a burr? Play in the center of your tone. <laughs> I mean, like, your, your lips match your, your tongue, and your lips do this the whole time. But sometimes when you think really hard, your, your lips will start to get a little bit tight on you because you're trying to think. And then all of a sudden, you're going to be trying to play a note a little bit above or a little bit below than the one you're blowing the air straight through and they don't match. And that's what causes that little double buzz that you're hearing every now and then in my playing. So I'm just going to slow down the tempo to give it enough time. Uh, you know the expression is why people um, who don't practice like to play things super fast. And, you know, if, if you're in your lesson and you, and you rush... It's less time to hear your mistake. Exactly. Oh, you remember the quote. Yeah, your mistakes don't last as long. <laughs> That's why you play it faster if, you're, if it's wrong. So I'm going to slow it down here. Where are we on? A? We're on A, yeah.
That's speed. Wonderful. One more. I'm playing, sorry, I'm playing a little, <laughs> playing it down the octave. Here, here, let me find new. There we go. Sorry about that. It's the whole switching back before between tuba and, and euphonium. That, that's my biggest mistake is making sure I start on the right note. turn. Wonderful. Excellent. All right. Let's see. Who should I pick? Let's kind of go back through the cycle and let me pick Naomi. We started with you. You ready to play just the scales yeah. all the way through? Sure. Here we go. Right, now let's make sure we sound like a string bass and it's ringing so we're like ringing like one note never ends it just keeps on ringing to infinity so it's just one giant smooth motion <sighs> Just like that. Excellent. Excellent job. So here's my big question for anybody here. Raise your hand. Have, have anybody actually played either of these scales regularly before? All right. Two, two of y'all have. Okay, good. So we got some jazz improvers over here. Um, well, three, include Dave. But he doesn't improv. I'm kidding. I shouldn't joke about that. I, he's actually a really great <laughs> trombone player. All right. So you guys are sounding really good. Keep practicing this. Um, don't think of your scales as something to practice to get your scales working or you don't practice your scales so your sight reading gets better. That's the thing that people say and it's, it's, it's not that it's not true, but you should kind of come up with really good goals to work on while you're practicing your scales or else it'll feel like a waste of time. Uh, the big one right now is your, the, you don't have to always be working on your legato tonguing, but I'm hearing everybody 
legato tonguing is a good thing to practice. So ba di da 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 di di be that let that be the 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 entire purpose of it. Do 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 di 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 di. Your scales should just be that mechanism that you're using to work on that. Once you get your legato tongue going, you can work on any type of articulation, your marcados, staccatos, or even better, you can start working on shaping your phrasing. Um, and, and that's really, these scales are a lot more melodic. Necess- uh, it's terrible saying that, than, than your major scale, I think so. Because it sounds a little bit more interesting to, to play a blues scale than, than just a, a major scale. So something you can do to, to work on shaping your phrase. And again, the dynamics during the note is a thing that a lot of people overlook. Not each note getting louder success, uh, su- successfully, successively, excessive, whatever. <laughs> but it's, it's actually having that crescendo going through the notes. That's, that's, that's the thing that once you start paying attention to it, you realize whether or not you're doing it. All right. Um, I want to just jump back a little bit. Um, let's do this one. Um, hey, Cody, is this going to look scary to you? Actually, we're going to go back. Let's do this one. Cody, give me a thumbs up if you're there and you want to try to play this. We'll start with the second exercise for you. No, I don't see a thumbs up. All right, who, do, who wants to volunteer? Uh, no volunteers. I'll just voluntold Dave. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to work on the perfect fourths. All right. And this is mainly, you're going to think that I'm trying to pick a, an exercise that's good for you guys. I'm doing it for me because I need to make sure I'm playing my tuba in tune when I'm going over wider intervals. So that's what I want you to be thinking about, making sure when you're playing each of these, you're in tune. Because I said that, I'm going to let Dave go first, and I will copy his pitch. All right, let's go for it. One measure at a time. All right. N- number one, right? Number one. Okay. Sorry. One more.
All right, so yeah. that seems pretty easy for everyone. Let's move, um, now we're gonna do the exact same exercise, ish, here. So let's have Justin, do you want us to lead, want to lead us through this one? We're gonna do one T, two T, and then three T, and then, then, then we'll be done for the day. So, um, you lead us first, and then we'll, um, and we'll just follow one line at a time. Sound good? Sure, what, uh, what tempo do you want this at? About here, 72, something like that. Next one. This next one, let's just do one measure at a time. D and maybe a ba di da da di da da di da da di da. I think we can do it. All right, let's go for it. Well, it's 1157, 
And uh, let me just open up the floor to everyone to, to, to chat a little bit about this, because um, the thing is with scales is some people practice their scales a lot, and some people um, have yet to be practicing their scales a whole bunch. So my big question is, how did today feel for you? Because it's very different than what we've normally been doing. Today, we were pretty much just working on scales the whole time. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts? Which process do you like? What do you like better? Should we mix it up more? Should we uh, do half of what we normally do and half of this? What What are your thoughts? I I enjoyed this. Yeah. Anybody f felt it was too easy? No. no. You can give me a you can give me a thumbs up if if you don't want, or you can you can private message me on here if you if you think so and you don't want to you know rat everybody else out because I I think. <laughs> This process is really good. A lot of people wonder, how should I practice my scales? And there's a couple different ways you can do it. My personal favorite is to name the notes first, and then the name the notes and finger it second, and then play it third. So by the time you go to play it, you're nailing it. But this process that we went today, uh, I think worked really well for everybody. Um, do uh, tonguing exercises on them. And, and this is the point of this book. And that's why I'm really teaching this book uh, today. And I'm trying to use um, um, Nicholas's method uh, because it works really well. So we have these skills we need to learn. So let's take a full measure on every note, and we can work on different articulations. And we can change that up tomorrow if, if you'd like to uh, all the different processes in the book. So we bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum bum bum. You have enough time. You don't want to use too much brain power to think of what note comes next. But the big focus is tone. The big focus is what the musical element we're trying to create. And then we're just, just so happened to be practicing our scales at the same time. So that's why I'm trying to do an articulation first. And then we're doing a pattern exercise. Um, they get a lot more complicated with the pattern exercises. So I was trying to make the simplest one, just going do, re, do, re, mi, re, mi, fa, mi. And then uh, lastly, we put it all together. And then by the time we, we play the scale the third time, the way it's supposed to be written, it's pretty easy. So that's the goal. So I'm going to show you just real quick how many other scales. This, this book has 64 different scales. These are the sim simple ones. We have a diminished blues flat nine scale, which is Ooh. awesome. Um, yeah. Can we play it real quick? Uh, on euphonium, maybe. <laughs> All right. So basically, these scales, these these blue scales, and they're they're not all just jazz scales, but these jazz scales specifically are when you have a chord change you're playing against, what scale can you pick to, to improv on? That's what they're for. So these are good to get not just in your fingers, but then eventually they get into your ear, and just like you're whistling, you kind of hear a tune in your head, and then your fingers will follow you. That's, that's the goal of practicing these, these jazz scales a little bit. But we have other ones. We have just a harmonic major. How many of you have played a harmonic major scale? Usually we just do a harmonic minor. Um, there's our harmonic minor, just because we need to practice it. Then we have a whole bunch of different. This is a hexatonic scale, if you want to hear what that one sounds like. Whoa. And a lot of these um, are almost like compositional tools that different composers have used. Yeah. Major, major pentatonic. Uh, minor pentatonics, a whole tone scale. Well, there is a whole bunch more, but I don't want to like make it available for free. So this is a really good book to just sit down, open up, and practice. You can you yeah. can throttle it to make it really easy to practice. Uh, if you're just you know having a rough day or you didn't took a couple days off and need to get your face in, or you can increase the tempo. You can increase the different uh, rhythmic exercise. Um, and these are really fun. If we were gonna do do, re, mi, do. We can go. Anyway, so you do the, the whole tone scale with different rhythmic exercises. It's, it's, it can be as hard or as easy as you want it to be, but 
we can always just match it to what makes what makes you sound the most successful. It is two minutes over. I'm so sorry I held everybody over. So uh, hope everyone has a good time. Um, invite your friends. <laughs> Whatevs. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. All right. Have a good one. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome.